Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today is an idea in a calculus class. This is IB Math SL Analysis and Approaches, Topic 5. So this is a calculus problem here. It is a great overview of the power and the usefulness of calculus. It is an optimization problem where we're going to be looking at the derivative and the second derivative. So the problem is, can you maximize the volume in this box. So let's say I have a piece of cardboard three inches by three inches, and I want to cut something out of the corners. I don't know how much I cut out of the corners, but I want to cut these corners out so this cardboard will fall, fold up into a box. So I want to maximize the volume of this, and I want to know how much to cut out. So I'm going to say V of X. That is going to be my volume function. I want to maximize my volume here. I need to figure out um, what the volume is first, and then I'm going to take the first derivative of it, set it equal to 0, to find a max or a min point. So from this picture, if this is 3, and this is x, and this is x, then this little blue box right there is going to be the base of my box. And I can see it is 3 minus x minus x. So this length right there is 3 minus 2x. And this height right here is 3 minus 2x. That's going to be the base of the box with a height with this thing folded up of x. So I have length times width times height to get volume. I should get a cubic. Um, so my volume function is my x times 3 minus 2x times 3 minus 2x, or 3 minus 2x squared. So there's my volume function. Let's foil this out and clean it up a little bit. The volume of this box is going to be equal to x. 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 2x times 3, negative 6x. Negative 6x, negative 12x. Negative 2x times negative 2x, 4x squared. So that right there, 4x squared minus 12x plus 9, is the area of that blue box. Then to find volume, I multiply by the height by that x right there. So the volume function is going to be equal to, I'm going to distribute that x through the quantity, and then I'm going to rearrange them with my highest exponent first. So x times 4x squared is 4x to the third. x times negative 12x is negative 12x squared. 9 times x is 9x. So there's my volume function in black of that box. And now again, the question is, where is it optimized? Where is it going to be a maximum? So what value of x will give me the most air or water I could pour into that box? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take the derivative of my function and set it equal to 0. So v prime of x. I'm going to say v prime is 0 because I'm going to set it equal to 0. I take the derivative of this function. 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract 1, x squared. 2 times negative 12, negative 24, x to the first. 9, x to the first, which is just 9. So there's my derivative. I should have just called that my derivative. So there's my derivative. I'm trying to save some space here. Let's actually rewrite this derivative a little simpler because I can see a 3 goes into all of those terms. So my derivative is 3 goes into there 4 times, leaving me with 4x squared. 3 goes into there negative 8 times plus 3. So all I've done is factor out a 3 just to simplify it a little bit. So step one was create my volume function in black. Step two in blue is find the derivative. Step three is going to set that derivative equal to 0. So now I'm setting that derivative equal to 0. Divide both sides by 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0, so that cancels out. Now I have to solve this equation. So the way I'm going to solve this is factor it. I could use a quadratic formula. That'll work too. Quadratic formula is going to give me two answers. If I factor it, it'll probably give me two answers as well. The factors of 4x squared 
or a 2x and a 2x. Factors of 3 are a 3 and a 1. Either they are both positive to give me a positive 3, or they are both negative. To get a negative 8x in the middle, they're going to have to both be negative. Let me double check that. 4x squared minus 6x minus 2x gives me the negative 8x plus 3. Then with the zero sum property, either this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So either 2x minus 3 is equal to zero or 2x minus 1 is equal to zero. Solving for x here, I add 3 to both sides. 2x is equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2. So there's a solution right there, 3 halves or 1 and a half. Then my other solution, we'll go back to blue here, is 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. Add 1 to both sides, 2x is equal to 1. Divide both sides by 2. So I have two solutions. I don't know if they are maximums or minimums. I don't know which one I want to pick. I could take those values and plug them in and realize this one really isn't going to work. Um, but let's use the second derivative to find if it's concave up or concave down. The second derivative is just the derivative of the derivative. So it's going to be represented with y double prime, or in this case, v double prime. The thing to note, the thing you want to put in your notes is, if I take the second derivative and I plug in an x value and it is positive, my function is going to open up meaning it will be a minimum point. If I take my value and plug it in my second derivative and it's negative, it'll open down and be a maximum point. Okay, so that's kind of a key thing to have in your note. If the second derivative is positive, it is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, it is concave down. So here's my derivative. Y prime equals that. You go to green for my double prime, so v double prime is going to be the derivative of this derivative. 2 comes down in front to give me 8x to the first, minus 1 comes down in front, minus 8. So there's my second derivative. That's not too hard to find. Let me start with my blue value right here. So I'm going to take this blue value, 1 half, I plug it in here. 8 times 1 half, 4 minus 8 is equal to negative 4. It is negative. Because it is negative, this is my max maximum. I could actually be finished right there knowing this is my maximum, but let me do that value as well. My other value, 1 and a half, I plug that in there. I have 8 times 3 halves minus 8. So 12 minus 8 is equal to 4. This is positive. It is positive. So this value is a minimum at the bottom of the graph. And I'll show that to you um, graphically as well. So remember this. x to the half, the second derivative is negative. Therefore, it is a maximum. The output's a maximum. Here, my other value, 3 halves, when I plug it into the second derivative, it is a positive, so it's a minimum. So let's take a look at that graphically here. I drew out my original function for volume. y is equal to 4x to the third minus 12x squared plus 9x. And I graphed it in Desmos here. And you can see right here, here is my first value of a half. And it is a maximum of 2. Here is my second value of 1 and a half, and it is the minimum at 0. So the correct answer, where is this box going to be maximized? Where is the optimization point? It is going to be maximized when x is equal to a half. The volume will be 2. So you have to discard this as a minimum. And we only figure that out by taking the second derivative. So let's just take a look at those two answers. 1 half and 1 and a half. Here's our original box. If it is a half, we plug a half in there. 
3 minus 2 times a half is 2. So this would be 2. This would be 2 to get a base of 4. The height would be equal to a half. 4 times a half would be 2. The volume of the box would be 2. So that's my input. That's my optimization point. Why this one does not work, you could see why it's a minimum. If this is 1 and a half, well, if this x is 1 and a half by 1 and a half, my base is going to be 0. 0 times anything is 0. So I could see why this is a minimum. OK, hopefully that was helpful. Introduction to optimization and calculus, how to find the maximum or minimum by taking the first derivative, setting it equal to 0, and then taking the second derivative to see if it is concave up or concave down. Again, the thing to remember in your notes, if the second derivative is positive, it is a minimum. Or if the second derivative is negative, it is a maximum. And again, on that graph, you can see the difference between a maximum point and a minimum point. Again, my domain on x could only be between 0 and 1 and 1 half. All right, thank you for watching.